In the last video, I covered setting up a project within DaVinci Resolve, importing our footage of Jimmy with a moving camera, and we studied the footage to decide a strategy for camera tracking. I concluded that we needed to mask out Jimmy's head and these two mirrors. Jimmy's head because it moves somewhat during the clip, and the mirrors because the reflection will move in a non-perspective way, which will throw off the camera tracks. So let's go ahead and get started with our tracking. First thing we need to do is create a timeline out of this to hold the footage and the tracking. So this is just what we looked at, but now is a track in the timeline. Going into the Fusion tab, we then are presented with this kind of blank Fusion document with media in, bringing in the frames of video, media out, whatever comes through this flow, through the node graph, is then what will show up when the timeline is viewed. So to start with, I'm going to pull in a Mocha Pro node. The tracking can probably be done fairly well with the tracker that's built into Fusion. Um, since I have Mocha, I've gotten used to it. It has a lot of really nice features, tends to do a really good job. Um, but you're welcome to try this without it too. In order to do the track, we launch the Mocha user interface which then warns me that I'm not at the current version. And the first thing we notice is that it's all dark and horrible looking. And this is what I mentioned before about when working in linear color space, all the values are linear within Fusion, even though they're not necessarily shown that way in the rest of um, DaVinci Resolve. So to fix this, a um, couple things to notice that you may not have. This Fusion View LUT seems to do the right thing. There is a Managed LUT, which shows the color managed output. But I seem to do OK with it. So what we want to do to fix this is to pull in a gamut node, place this between the Media In and the Mocha Pro node. And then within the gamut, just set our output space to something like sRGB is fine. Um, the 709s would be fine too. It's really just so that when we view it in Mocha, our image is not dark. To begin tracking, I'm going to start by tracking the head. Um, it doesn't move very much, so it probably will work by just kind of drawing a rough shape around his head. Um, we'll turn off shear. We're not expecting... Actually, I mean, it is probably a perspective change, but it's not a large number of pixels, and it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to set the, the name. It's always good to, to name your tracks so that you know what's going on later. And then we just start this. And a couple things to point out while this is running. Um, first of all, I'm in the classic view in Mocha. If you start up Mocha Pro now, it goes into this elementary view, essentials view. Um, I've gotten used to the full piece of information. I don't really like the Essentials view, but this data is all there somewhere. But it fills in this tracking information by default based on the size of the area you're tracking. In our case, it decided it needs a 50% pixel match. This will vary depending on what it is you're tracking. And you can play with this if the track doesn't do very well. The other important thing is how much is the track adjusted for translation scale, rotation, shear, or perspective? Um, this can be set to as simple as translation, or you can add these in one at a time. Any given ones being set requires all the ones above it to be set. For this case, perspective is probably correct, because this is a perspective change. But we're only roughly tracking this shape anyway. It's just to use it as a mask. Um, 
the area being tracked does give pixels that won't be used by the camera solver, but we have a lot of little features all over the place that the solver should be able to use to find our track. All right, and the track is just about finishing up. One thing I will point out about this from this particular scene, it is really helpful to put explicit tracking markers in a scene, especially if we have something like a mirror, we could put a few markers on that to make it very easy to track the mirror. If I just play this track, it seems to track just fine. I want to look at the watch what's going on with the mirror and what I'm looking for is something in the roughly the same plane as the mirror that we can use as a tracking point and we just fell out of our cache. All right, so one of the things I'm looking for with the mirror is something that's always in frame that is in roughly the same plane as the object that I want to make a mask for. Before I do that, I'm going to quickly go save this document. Um, I've had enough experience with the Mocha plugin crashing occasionally, and it saves its data within the node inside of Fusion, inside of Resolve, so it is saved as part of the project. So back to our tracking. I want something that moves roughly in the same plane. And Something that kind of stands out to me is this top piece of the case here. It's not very reflective, and these lights that are, are shining on it shouldn't change very much. I could also track the top of the case, but it's not going to quite move the same. The other option would be the front of the case, which would be really easy to track. In fact, I may try that. Tr do the front of the case, and then compare that with the track lock to this. So, let me just go over what I'm going to do. Create a new little tracker here, just based on some of the interesting parts of this computer case. And there should be plenty in there to track. So 30 is actually, well, that's probably OK. Let's track this as a full perspective change. Regardless, this track will be useful for other things. We want to make sure we turn off the tracking for Jimmy's face, otherwise it will recompute all that tracking information. And we'll go ahead and start the track on the face of the computer. This should track fairly well, especially as a perspective track. So I'll see you in a minute when this finishes. All right, as the track finishes up, I'm going to go ahead and save this, go back into Resolve, save the file, and then go back into Mocha. So the track, my track covered this curved part on the top here, so it didn't actually do that great a job of tracking. I think this will be enough for what I want. So to start with, I'm going to just kind of scrub through this footage, looking for about where the most of the mirror shows. Looks like probably right around 340 or so seems to be the most amount of mirror showing. So to track this, I'm going to just draw a shape that kind of pulls out a little bit more of the mirror than we really need. And I'm going to guess where the other corner is. Something like this. And I'll go ahead and make this square. So now for the tricky part. Instead of tracking this, I'm going to go over here to link to track. So let's rename this first. To the left mirror. Right now it's linked to the track for left mirror, which there isn't one yet. But what we're going to do is link this to the computer face. So what this will do is this will track this shape 
around as the computer face moves. Now the closer the camera gets, the more this will be off from what our desired position is. Hopefully we can fix this with a fairly small number of manual roto steps. So if we, what I'm looking for here, it's I would say right about here, this space in between tracks quite well. Then as we get closer, the tracking is much worse. So I'm going to go to about here. And so what needs to happen, at this point, the track in the mirror should be smaller than this one by a bit. Um, to do this, uh, let's just scale it like this. I'm just going to scale this with the... There's keyboard shortcuts for all of these that I don't really remember. Let's leave that up there just to bring that edge in a little bit. So the nice thing about this mask is the extra that we're getting is, is dark, so there's not much to be gained or lost. I will just go do one way off here at the very first frame. It's more important in this for this mask that we have too much covered than not enough. So this one tracks pretty good till about here. Then we come in here and we we are way off, so I will just move the whole track to the right place. And then when we come back here, I'll move it back. So a shift from left to right, these are not going to match very well. And got something similar going on with that perspective shift. And we're way off again here. Probably pretty good about there. And then here. That track looks pretty good. All right, now we just need to do the same thing with the other mirror. Let's find the one with the most in scene. So I'm going to add another one for this other mirror. Similarly, capturing some extra space. And we're going to link this, the right mirror, yeah, that doesn't do anything. There's no track there. We're going to link this also to the computer face, and we'll probably have to do the same adjustments. So let me just pull through these. We're way off. Actually, we're much more off here. Wondering if I can track this vertical edge of the mirror. But if we just try not to pull in too much of the reflection, but I'm going to just grab this edge piece here. In this case, I'm going to turn off the perspective aspects of this, and let's just see what it does. I'll come back when I stop this or when it works.
All right. Um, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a crash thanks to a clipboard bug in Synergy, which I used to share mouse and keyboard across Linux and Mac. So I'm going to restart where I left off. We had created this right mirror track, but it was based on the computer face and was not tracking very well. So what I've done here is gone back and redone this track, linking it to this right vertical piece that we tracked. And scanning through it, it does leave a little bit when I get near the limits of the camera movement. However, I don't think that's enough to actually cause a problem. So what we can do is make visible the, the three faces that we want, the three track shapes that we want to be masks. And we'll do export shape data, all visible layers, and copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to not do that right now because that's what caused the crash. So instead, we'll go back into Resolve, where I pasted those in here. So the only other thing that I've done, if you look at these tracks, they're white shapes on a black background. For the camera tracker, we need to actually tell it the shapes where the camera is valid. So the way to do this, in, we could set each of these to invert, set the paint mode to subtract, or we can go to the last one and just set the paint mode to invert and set it to invert, which will cause there to be dark shapes on a white background. In the next video, I will go over using the 3D camera tracker to recreate a 3D camera model that follows how the real camera moved when the clip was filmed.